Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, at CGB, and your eyes do not deceive you. It's Historic Brawl. Yeah, we're playing Historic Brawl on the channel. Uh, I've been sticking to standard pretty exclusively, totally exclusively, since it won battle for the channel. And I've been trying to figure out how to approach content in 2022. I feel like I had clear goals and a defined path in 2021, a lot to do with the streak and trying to end it on a high note, do it right by all of you guys. And in 2022, I'm just kind of playing games. And, you know, that sticks for a while. And then after a while, you feel like you need to be doing more. It's just the circle and cycle of life. Not everything is meant to be totally fun and engaging at all times. Things have ebbs and flows. And I'm ebbing in a direction a little bit away from standard right now. The thing is, I'm going to continue to do standard. It's what most of you subscribed for. I honestly think that if I just stopped doing standard because I wasn't enjoying it, even though a lot of other people do that and a lot of other people subscribe to that ideology that we they you know absolutely have have to have fun it's not like i don't have fun playing standard it's just sometimes i have more fun doing other things so since you guys subscribed expecting standard i'm gonna keep doing standard when i ask myself about the difficult things i have to do in a given day or week or month sitting down and playing some standard for you guys is not incredibly difficult it's sometimes difficult to be on and be the showman and the player that i want to be but as far as just getting together like 40 to 50 minutes for you guys who play the format and love the format to enjoy i can usually do that however the outlet the artist must live right um that's is the thing i've heard said a few times to me um so on twitch i do pretty much what i want I play whatever formats I want, I talk about whatever I want, and I talk and perform how I want to perform. So, uh, FYI, up front, as we get into some of these historic brawl videos taken from Twitch footage, disclaimer, this is Twitch CGB that you're going to watch. Twitch CGB talks to his chat on Twitch, because that's a big point of streaming on Twitch. Twitch CGB is a little different from YouTube CGB, I believe, uh, truly, and I, I've worked on this more than most people will know or ever realize, that it's very hard to appeal to both audiences, which is why most people who rip their VODs from Twitch and put them on YouTube don't see a similar success uh, to uh, people who focus on one on YouTube or focus on Twitch. You know, most people have a strong home and the other one doesn't quite follow because a lot of people don't quite get past being themselves or a bigger version of themselves. Whereas I almost, I'm almost two different people sometimes. Um, Twitch is very much about uh, putting on the show and trying to keep people engaged, a live audience, and interacting with them and trying to make them feel like they're somehow involved and were part of a journey. Whereas YouTube is very much about, I'm literally here sitting by myself, talking to myself, trying to lay out a narrative and outline for people who will watch this later. I don't need to make them feel like they're part of the show. I need to make them feel like they're the reason for the show, like that this is a product made for you. That is the you and YouTube, right? That's kind of the core of YouTube is that you can go on YouTube and find what you, specific you out there watching this want. Uh, anyway, this is getting really philosophical and you came here for some treasure, uh, historic brawl for from Corvold. But uh, be warned, Twitch CGB is a little different. Acquired taste, if you don't like it, I understand. That's fine. Leaving comments like, I like it. <laughs> like a Yelp review. It's not going to change it. <laughs> it's, Twitch CGB is going to be Twitch CGB. And if you enjoy it, come check it out on Twitch or follow on Twitch and tune in from time to time. And maybe I'll post more of these videos. Um, take some of the Twitch footage when it's good and put it on YouTube for you guys to watch later and hopefully enjoy. So, Treasures Historic Brawl, Corvold. I think that Corvold as a commander in Historic Brawl is always near the upper echelon, but it hasn't been there in the past. Even with a lot of the powerful cards that came out with Corvold in the Eldraine Brawl decks and over the last several years, Corvold isn't quite there. In Commander, Corvold is freaking busted because of cards like Dockside Extortionist and a long, long, long list of sacrifice cards that get played. But in Brawl, it didn't have all the tools until Streets of New Capenna. Streets of New Capenna 
introduced so many treasure cards that you can now play a Corval deck that isn't about like sacrificing this piece of creature fodder or sacrificing this. It's a very straightforward strategy. Try to make a pile of treasure and then play Corvold and sack all of it because you draw a card for every single treasure you sack if Corvold so much as touches the battlefield when you have those treasures. So this is a treasure-focused Corvold Brawl deck that really just tries to set up with treasure, 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 then play Corvold and go nuts. Literally trying to win the game sometimes in one swing uh, and sometimes it might take two. But most of the time when you play Corvold, it's easily a 10-10 or a higher the next turn when you attack with it, just because you make a pile of treasure. And a lot of the new cards that showed up to make this possible, like, I mean, Black Market Tycoon, pretty obvious one. Just keep making treasures and sacrificing them, absolutely. Gallic Readers, just cranking out treasure. Uh, this Riveteer's Requisitioner is an important card because you can sacrifice the creature to make the treasure and then sacrifice the treasure to make the mana to play something else. All of these drawing cards while Corvold's on the field. To protect your Corvold, because you do ha actually have to untap and win with it. We have Snakeskin Veil, Tamiyo, Safekeeping, Veil of Summer. Just pretty... Pretty smart stuff. Anyway, Glittering Stockpile, just another treasure-based card. Fable the Mirror Breaker, because we're a red deck, but Professional Face Breaker. This is another one that's making huge waves in Commander, and can see play in Historic Brawl. Jewel Thief, another just free treasure kind of card. Like, there's so many of these. Tireless Provisioner is actually one I had to craft, but it's a very nice uncommon that you can get out of the Historic Horizons set that came out. Um, it might be sitting there in your not collected yet, if you're anything like me and don't play the format a ton. So uh, Agnes the Dragon's Lash is another just easy treasure generator to go with Stimulus Package, which is one of the better ones, uh, as well as Big Score, Unexpected Windfall, Pirate's Pillage. Just having three effects means that you really pile the treasures high. And um, Bootlegger Stash, if you want to go to the moon, here's a deck that can do it. You get this out and... It, make it through the turn, like you untap with this on the field, you make so many treasure, then the next time you play Corvold, you can almost draw your deck. It is absolutely wild. And of course, Zayatora, the Incinerator. We don't have any fling in the deck. I definitely tried with Kazool's Fury, but too many of my draws got clunky. A lot of the DFC lands that enter the battlefield tapped have been completely replaced in the mana base just for lands that enter untapped so I can curve out. Uh, you see, I don't have Evolving Wilds. I don't have Terramorphic Expanse. Like, cutting all those things, really only running the Zeator's Proving Ground. Everything else, uh, just try to have untapped land so that you can make your plays on time because that's what's really important in these battles. Um, but yeah, Zeatora, the Incinerator, is my fling card masquerade as a demon dragon. Uh, flinging Corvold with this thing often ends the game, or just fling something and make a couple treasure. And the next time you play Corvold, you'll draw a lot of cards. I strongly recommend this deck. It's both extremely fun, and for me, for saying that about a Jun deck is rare, and I think it's borderline highly competitive. Like, I think that you can play really well in the brawl queue one more word about the brawl queue before we dive in already a long intro i know that's my first historic brawl video in i think a year if you want to try hard don't let anybody tell you brawl is supposed to be casual and you're trying too hard like if you enjoy it if it then then freaking go for it like spike it up get a little salty if it hits you that way but keep pushing try to make your decks as good as you can make them because i find historic brawl to be a very rewarding competitive format on mtg arena like it is hard to play you're probably going to see me roping more than normal two reasons for that one live audience interacting with have to switch brain on and off of dealing with live audience but two i think historic brawl is legitimately hard to play well. Yes, you can just throw your cards on the battlefield and see what happens, but to really play Historic Brawl well takes a lot of effort, a lot of brain power. And I think it's one of the most difficult formats to play perfectly in Magic Arena history. And I think if you enjoy that, you enjoy that kind of challenge and puzzle, you should go for it. And don't let anybody tell you that you're trying too hard at Historic Brawl. The queue is like kind of, it's kind of curated that way. 
that your commander will go up against other commanders of similar power level, although I think they're underrating Corvold at this point. So anyway, that's my little diatribe. If you want to go be a spiky brawl player, be a spiky brawl player. Go be a spiky brawl gamer. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Bolus. Dragon Showdown. Let's go. We have Tron. We have Once Upon a Time. We go first. The Spit Flame is probably a dead card, but maybe we'll find a way to turn it into something else. I love the Spit Flame in like a when your dragon is your commander. Just it's kind of a free card. Just get it back sometimes. Mana's tight, but hey, it's okay. Do we want to play this Kalein on two? I guess we'll play the Den just in case. Oh no, maybe we should once upon a time here. We might hit a uh, Triome. No Triome. Do we take fourth land or big dragon? Ugh. The right play is the land. The content play is the dragon. I'm gonna take the land. I suck. Boring streamer. Dislike video. Leave negative Yelp review. Moonvale Regent, more dragons. Take two. Valky. Trying to mess up my day. Takes the moon veil. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we draw. All right. So we can keep curving out. We don't have to deploy this layer right now. You can play this Bosage, you play this tracker. We could also play this layer and use the treasure on the tracker, but you always want to try to save those for Corvold. Could also just spit flame the Valky to play Regent next turn. But then you're not getting back the spit flame right away? Maybe that's fine. I didn't expect it to be very good against Bolus anyway. They got that rope going. I mean, you already see my hand, opponent. You don't need to check the stream. It's fine. This is fine. I told you Brawl was hard. This person can't even figure out how to get through turn two. All right. Timed completely out. Give it to him. Give him the business. I think we just get the tracker down and try to pressure them a little. Save the treasures for the Corvold. It's all right. I'm sure chat needs a little nap, too. We all perform a little better after a nap, right? Hagra mauling. No basics. Ice cold. Ice cold. So we could run out the Corvold now. It would resolve. You have to worry against blue decks. But if we wait till next turn, we can have Passage and we can do some other stuff. We could just spit flame this. We can possibly also replay the Regent, so... Also, um, this is just for the good of the people. No more holding priority from our opponent. No more priority hold. <laughs> I'm literally saving another 10 minutes of your life. You're welcome. Duress nothing. Love it. Well played. Terramorphic Expanse. I think next turn we try to play the Regent, get back Spit Flame. I think we just try to pressure them without actually deploying our commander. It's risky because they might pile up counter spells, but we might also draw something like a Veil of Summer.
We also have the creature lands to apply pressure as well. That's just value. Go ahead, play your next four toughness creature opponent. I will spit flame it. I am ready for Goldspan Dragon. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. I need that card. That card is trying to shine here. Also, casting Corval lets us draw three cards. That's kind of nice. Gilded Lotus. Big Pog. Can I get this Boseju back? And a Braid the Kalane. Hey, they're tapped out, guys. I think it's Corvold time. I think we've got Corvold time. The question is, do I discard this hand? It's not the greatest hand. Take action. Pit Flame, uh, sacrifice another permanent. I'm gonna sack this. Can I, okay. Get back Flame, draw. Hopping off. Do I still have a Swamp in here? Yes. Now we have Village Rights open. Give them the business. Why not sack the clue token? It's a card. Another card. I can sack it later. I don't need to sack it right now. I might have a way to get this uh, Boseju back. Like some regrowth effect, and then I can blow up the Gilded Lotus. Crux of Fate. Destroy all dragons. You... You Bonk. Three for the road. And a handful of gas. Oh, I got cards. Opponent's got cards. I have faced worse than the likes of you. Alright, this is kind of weird, because whatever card goes to their hand here, we get to Thought Seize it. So we actually want to give them the better card. Here you go. Uh, put that card into opponent's hand, the other will be exiled. Yep. Enjoy. And then there was none. All right, toys deployed. You can go get that Croxa if you want. I mean, I'm down. I'll discard this Spit Flame again. I'm okay with it. You want to bolus me? You want to bolus me, bro? Zara, thank you for the tier one. Appreciate that. Nine months. They are going for that Croxa. They love that Croxa. Nope. <laughs> Just kidding, Olus. You should bow in the presence of a deity. Uh, enjoy. They get Tamio safekeeping. Give it up for opponent. Tamio safekeeping achieved. Swacky, thank you very much for the Prime. Uh, 
All right, do we give up the flame? Flame plus provisioner can trade with Croxa next turn, but I mean, like I've got too many land already, right? Flame in theory we can get back, but I've got too many land. So I guess I'll just take this three. What's this? Yeah, you get you get that two life. All right, what's this got? Negative four, seven damage, planeswalker or creature, and exile each non-land permanent your opponent controls. Pog. All right, all right. How are we gonna deal with Bolus here? I mean, if they're just gonna minus him, we've got a lot of cards that are like synergistic for our deck that aren't great for theirs. And they don't have an answer for the stash right this minute. So I think we're doing this the fun way. I do need time. If the Bolus ultimate happens, I'm going to lose. So I need time. Whereas Karn is card advantage. I'm just going to go after the Bolus and keep it in check. Not sure if that's right. We definitely need our opponent not to draw a counter spell. I think powering up a creature land there and attacking the Planeswalkers is how a standard magic player would think, but if you take out Bolus, they just play it again. You know? Like, it's command. This is commander. I, I, you've got a. There's a different mindset for playing competitive best of one standard and playing commander. The, the game works differently. If you spend your whole turn on power up, layer a hydra, attack their planeswalker, and then they play their. They play it again because you sent it to the command zone. It's like you just reset it and you did absolutely nothing with your turn, except for cost them two more mana, which they wanted to use anyway. So. Yeah, people have to get out of the mindset of, like, I see a planeswalker, I must kill it. If a planes walks, we could kill it. You know, they, they gotta let it go. I think this is coming down next turn. Yeah, I think Corvald's trying to come down. As long as Corvald resolves next turn, this game should get really interesting. If it doesn't resolve, if they literally top decked a counter spell, well, good times. Exile two cards. All right, gamer. You got him. That's another good reason to discard the spit flame there. When you can scrape it out. Oh baby. Oh baby. It's about to get real. <gasps> ravenous squirrel! No! Not ravenous squirrel. Alright, to the moon. No stick. Let's go. No disdainful stroke, and we're good. All right, now I'll sacrifice the clue. Maybe I should have done that earlier. Maybe that was the right call. Mana is really useful in this format. All right, guys, you ready to go for the real ride? I don't know what I'm going to draw into, so we're just taking this one at a time. That's not bad.
And do we keep going? What can we do? We can make a treasure. With one mana, we can do not much. Other than grow this and draw another card. We can wait till their turn. It's fine. It's fine. You dare challenge a card! Not my dragon sword! How will I gain any card advantage? What was lost is now returned. All right, what you got? Ashiok. Ashiok interacts with Corvold. Uh, they got our safekeeping. We could try to hit our snakeskin veil. I guess we have to. I guess Veil of Summer would also do it. Create beautiful nightmares. Are you gonna go after the stash? Ugin! Curiosity and wonder drives But these planeswalkers kill things! No! No! Not like this. Alright. Let's see if we can draw out of it, shall we? We'll take this scry. Nope. And we'll take this scry. Burn down the house could be helpful. We still got Croxa to deal with. Anyway, gotta take our shot for the Veil of Summer here, I think, right? If we don't, what are we doing with our lives? We gotta take the shot. We have to. Veil of Summer or Snakeskin Veil. We need a Veil. Veil. Okay. Um, we don't have to exile anything if we sacrifice it, but then hand instead. Let's go to hand. Yeah, we're all very inspired right now. Thanks for that, Ashiok. Inspired to hate you! Hit your face! They didn't kill the squirrel. Imagine not killing the squirrel. Seriously. No fear of squirrel? Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna burn down the house, which means these two are gonna die. So I think I'm supposed to oven them. Wait a minute. They have no cards in hand. None. Like, actually none. Are you telling me? With this bootlegger stash? They, they left, they let this happen? Is that what you're telling me? I will show you the way. It's just a little treasure, guys. Nothing about treasures is broken. It's no big deal. This is fine. Uh, yes, I will sacrifice this other creature, and you will take 18 to the base. And that wasn't even the full amount I could do. Vardamir. Ishin. Ishin's a really popular commander right now. Run into it a lot. I mean, we've got ramp. We have no removal. Isha might run us over, but I think we're supposed to keep a hand like this. It's 
stimulus package. Hey kid, you like treasures? Uh oh. Well, they can't take the Magda and the Signet. They have to choose. The Provisioner? It's us. Mal, thank you very much for the tier one. Appreciate you. Okay. Keeps them off the board. Their, their commander requires them to attack with things to get value. And if they don't have a creature on the board, they have trouble attacking. And Spit Flame, I love you. I'm telling you. Most underrated card in the deck, Spit Flame. Any commander that is a dragon, you should consider running Spit Flame. Just endless reusable removal. Are you going to attack my artifact? No, Triumphant Adventurer. Okay. Do I Spit Flame this, or do I Stimulus Package and just set up for Corvold? Let them have a little venture. I think we can just manage the board with the Spit Flame, to be honest. Let them commit. We're just going to spit on this. It's fine. Whenever it attacks, roll a d20 and make treasures. I mean, I like that you respect treasures. Shows me you are also a gamer of culture and taste. I'm not giving up my signet. Patience. Patience, everybody. They might accelerate their mana a lot this turn, but I think next turn's Corvold is going to be juicy. They're rolling d20s? What is this? A board game? Three treasures acquired. I like it. I kind of want those. Mmm. Mmm. So, we're going to do some of that full control shenanigans. You guys ready? All right, triggers on the stack. First things first. Red gets back the spit flame, right? Okay. Check these moves out. Trokies would be proud. I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. I've never learned nothing from nobody. All right, sack the package now. I think we've done what we came to do. Yes, I will pay the red. Thank you. And uh, let's let's cast you too, since we drew a one drop. Now the opponent's just gonna like doom blade this. <laughs> no, it's edge. All right, we did draw a protection spell in the entire experience, which is kind of sad. Oh, they're oopsing me like I did something wrong, dude. <laughs> Dude, I have no regrets. I mean, did you miss the part where I drew like 15 cards? 
It's just too bad I didn't draw a snakeskin veil, that's all. Alright, three cards. Uh, I don't think I'll need... Oh, we do have a swamp, so I guess it's the best possible land. I mean, let's see if they can kill me. Maybe they have some kind of a, a way to just go off with this here. Also, maybe there was a way I could have set myself up with the mana to cast the Spit Flame, and that would have been better than all the crazy stuff I did. They just pulled a Gold Span Dragon. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. You rolled a one, loser. Treasure here. You, you done? Or... Reckless Storm Seeker. Okay, just play out all your creatures. We gotta find a way to stabilize now. We've got all these cards, but we actually didn't draw much control or removal of any kind. So, bodies hit the floor. I was probably supposed to leave a red open there. Crap. I was supposed to leave a red open. At least I still have the treasure. Red, 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 red. We'll go green. Did they emote me? <laughs> Didn't even notice. Too busy using my brain. Silly covert go brainiac. Imagine playing a deck with that requires brain. What a draw. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. Uh, if it's a creature... Okay, that, they're not doing that. Minus two. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Are you kidding me? I guess their graveyard kind of sucks. Good reason to hold off on the spit flame, though. Once our battle begins, a weapon they want the triumphant venturer. They give the counter to the dragon. Alright, do we take out the Ishin for the attack triggers, or do we take out the dragon that we can't block? The Ishin they just play again, right? Wait, do they get two of these? No, they don't. All right. I could sack the goat there, but let's just sack the treasures. They have to think at least a little about counterattacking the Luka. Don't they? Or are they just going to smork all? Place your bets. Anything could happen in the arena. Dude, don't draw a Magda. Magda would be pretty bad here. Venture into a dungeon, bro. Where are you going? Which dungeon you want to be in? Choose your dungeon. The Lost Mine of Fandelver. Frickin' vanilla, man. Straight up the middle. Ishin over here, this here, this here, I think. And we'll scry a little. Just a little. Boseju endures. 
Doesn't fix my current situation at all. Not like a burn down the house would. Get in my oven. Is it time for the Grand Corvold redeploy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not much mana left over if we redeploy Corvold. Not much at all. This is going to return something from the... I mean, obviously they were completely overmatched. Got him by trying to play well. Patience is, in fact, a win con. Sir Conrad? This could get spicy. I like to make creatures die, and Sir Conrad likes to take advantage of it. Oh, man. Cat no oven. Tracker's the only playable card in this hand. We mulligan. We have Tron, and we have a turn one Llanowar Elves. I get, oh, we don't have Tron. We have a dual land. Big difference, I guess. Persistent specimen. Return it from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Pog. I hate that this hand can't cast Kalane, though. I'm a little nervous. This could go a lot of bad. Don't kill my elf. Just don't kill my elf. Owie. Okay. Black or red? It's gotta be red here, right? Now we have village rights if they do kill our elf. We're gonna be taking some beat down pretty fast, though. Would love to draw another land off the top so we can play at sushi. It would have to be a red land or a black land, and then we could village rights it. That doesn't work. I guess we're going for Kalane. <gasps> My creature. Uh, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. I will sacrifice a creature, but not the way you expected. Trying to think, is it a take six windfall turn or is it a play Kalane hold up veil turn? Don't like all this blocking I have to think about doing. Our opponent's clock is actually quick. And uh, relentless. I don't want Sushi to get exiled. I'd like to play it with protection or a sacrifice outlet. The treasures, if we get the treasures, it, it's so amazing. Village rights, you say. Okay. Ta-da! It's Skyclave Shade! Look, Ma! My Shade's back. Didn't hold up a sack outlet, though. Interesting. They might have something else. Red. Red, red. Hold up green. Sure. You ain't exiling this. If you kill it, that's fine. Ooh, do we veil that anyway? Do we veil that anyway? Nah, I use veil to protect Corvold. This is a gift. This is a gift, guys.
Thank you, Twitchy Suspect, for the tier one. Appreciate that. We fall to 13. And it gets crazy. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This is gonna be sweet. Solemn? Opponent? You were supposed to try to kill this so I could thwart your plan and laugh at you and make you scoop. Now you're gonna make me actually attack you for 25 in one turn? I mean, I guess that's exciting too, but I, th I, I was really looking forward to the scoop. No point to doing it at end step here. I'm glad we didn't. Look what we drew. Now if we can clear the way for it somehow. There's a safekeeping. Hit them hard, baby. Make them rue the day. Dark freaking ritual, you say? What does that let us do? We're gonna get another treasure when we attack with Captain Lannery. Getting to 25 is kind of crazy, but it's not undoable. This is just a little gravy. Aw, oh, Goose! Where were you? Don't give him the chance to uh, sack the Solemn. 17. We're gonna have to settle for 17. All right. Let's see if they can kill me, huh? We did it! Big Dragon gets the job done. Are you not impressed? Are you not entertained? Patton. Light pause. <laughs> Light pause. Um, need removal. We are on the draw. This is not removal. Do we mulligan this hand? Is this hand too slow? It's got all our colors. It doesn't have ramp unless we draw creatures. And Vraska is too slow. I think we have to mulligan this. Look, I don't build my decks to respect Brawl Aggro, because Brawl Aggro is lame, but... Man. I guess I keep Shambling Gas Village rights. To give me a chance, but I still think there's a good chance we just get destroyed. We're playing against real gamers now. Cry to the top, because why not? Do it. Ah, They're slow rolling. Hope cure for nice. Very nice. Hope a gear for sacrifice it until your next turn. Target player is dealt damage by this can't cast non-creature spells. You mean like my whole hand? 
Cool. Love that. I love this. I love this. Show him what's up. I'm pretty sure we're just dead. But I think I have to sack the Shambling Ghast. Remove the hope of Giraper. So I don't think I beat that. I need to draw into some stuff I can actually play. I mean, I'm playing Fable next turn probably, so it's like removal spell or bust here. And even then, it has to be the right removal spells. I don't think I have Languish in this deck anymore. It's just like, burn down the house, Meat Hook. Yeah, Meat Hook's what we need, I guess. Highlight pause. Good thing you can't cast an aura this turn, but I'm sure you will next turn. Yep, our deck is just trying to do its own thing, and our opponent's thing is probably going to beat us. But hey, <laughs> just settle in. Enjoy the ride. Knight's Pledge, 4-4. Four, four. What aura would you like to fetch? It has to have mana less, and so it can only be a one mana aura. So this is like ethereal armor, is that in this format? I don't think so. Wait, what? Wait, what is this? Wait, equal to? Plus one, plus one, and flying. Okay. We go to 19. Let the, let the countdown begin. All right, guys, I got no time for tap plans. I got no time for big clunky stuff. Magda. All right, we lash him. We make some treasure, baby. We gotta draw a billion cards to hit Meat Hook Massacre, and we have to have a lot of mana to cast it. I don't see how this all comes together. It probably doesn't, but we try. Why wouldn't we try? Trapped in a tower. Well, that sucks. Wait, you have defensive auras and you get to attach stuff to light paws? That's freaking insane, bro. That's craziness. How you get away with this? Eleven, eleven? No! What what's on it? All the glitters. Yep, 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 yep. The killer. Valor of the worthy. You get another one mana aura, I guess? A little Sentinel's eyes. Okay. Vigilance seems good. Yes, like this. <laughs> Anytime. Come on over. Let's go. Brace for impact. Down to four. So what do I have to do? Block this? Is that even a reasonable thing to do? What does this do? I think if you're trapped in a tower, you should be able to block creatures with flying. But whatever. My opinion does not matter. Uh, put a core vault in front of it, draw some cards, or plays Zeatora. Zeatora blocking this would just be sad. 
But uh, we could sacrifice something to kill the dog. Man, our interactive stuff is just way too expensive. Who gets the chump block duty? Kill doggy, then Vraska. Great call! It only cost me six mana to kill the doggy. Freaking brilliant minds in chat. And then we have to chump block with this. Um, I guess that's what we go for. That's the line that keeps us alive, right? Two is not zero. Yeah, I mean, I might die, but your dog is coming with me. I mean, for all the auras, it just has flying and vigilance. If we can chump and then untap in Vraska, we have a shot. Why not throw down the arcane signet? Treasures are more valuable. Have you played with Corvold before? What does this do? Vigilance. When it dies, return this to the battlefield transformed into what? Enchant player. Creatures in enchant player controls enter the battlefield tapped. Lame. All right, one mana. One mana somehow get through for damage. But no! What? One mana tap a blocker? That's busted. All right. All right. I see you, Light Paws. I see you. With the bare minimum of pleasure for everybody involved, huh? How can you even call yourself a player? Just call yourself what you are. You're a mechanic. You're just getting in and getting out. The end. Um... Tyvar, elves. Well, we have the Mayhem Devil. Let's try it. Yeah, toilet gamers. Yep. <laughs> they have toilet gamers. Look at us go. We are off to the races. Now we need to find more mana. True to the cowl, huh? We can't cast you? We don't have black green. It is what it is. I mean, am I doing this? I guess we can play you. You're pretty good. Let's do that. We're gonna miss land drops. Let's play the best card we can. All right, Tyvar, what you doing? Three five. Oh yeah, alchemy, Tyvar. Crap. Okay, Alchemy Tyvar is le legitimate businessman. We're in trouble. Alchemy Tyvar. I, I, this thing has five toughness. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Let's discard treasure map. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I, I found five, four damage. I didn't find five, guys. 
Do we just save it for next turn then? I guess we save it? Dude, dude, we're gonna get destroyed. Going second. Just, we went second. Oh my god. This thing is insane. Seven! Seven toughness. Other tap creatures you control have death touch. Other untapped creatures have hexproof. The hell? Dude, they're laughing at my Mayhem Devil. Like, this elf deck doesn't give a fox. I mean, that's a card. Why does it keep wanting to use this tower? <laughs> I guess it needs it? Oh. Yeah, okay. Tough mana base, guys. It does have a terrifying ultimate that we have to at least try to battle with. But we need a few more permanents and one more turn. And the bright side is our opponent's not being too aggressive. So they're giving us a little bit of time here. When we pop, we pop pretty hard. No, 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 not like this. Just like this. Um, again, if we just kill this and they recast it, I guess it's their whole turn, right? So I'm not that worried about this card. Maybe I'm supposed to be, but I think their commander is going to end up being their actual value engine. Man, that's the only time we drove our Mayhem Devil today. And now it's dead. You know. Six. Wait, how big are you? Seven, nine. Hexproof. It's a heck of a wall you got there. Oh, oh, we're rumbling. Okay, opponent's done goofing around with me. Well, now I got a 1 1, so I'm good. First? Oh yeah, I just missed some land drops. The squirrel, guys. Do we like the squirrel? I think I love the squirrel. Not gonna lie. I think I love this squirrel. Squirrel's gonna be like, get on my level. The synergy! You've never seen such synergy. Free squirrel, everybody. This now ultimates on seven, right? Yep. So we gotta figure out how to hit this thing before seven. Vivi. Vigilance? Hexproof. Oh, good. As long as they don't make a flyer. Stumpy. Hex, like, uh, Corvald can rumble. We got reach? How'd it get reach? They named Reach? Oh, it has Hexproof from this. My bad. Mill something nice. Fatal Push could have been useful. 
<laughs> that card would have been a good draw. All right, guys. I think it's I think it's time to bring out the general. Here comes the general. Rise up. Do some of that full control, fancy maneuvering. Trigger on the stack. Do I want to sack anything to the tower? Not really. All these other cards like have useful abilities here. So what are we sacrificing? Let's go blue, because we go blue. Probably just a food token, but I like to figure this stuff out. Definitely don't need a tapped land this turn. Would love an untapped one. Beautiful. All right, blood draw. Okay, more land than I needed. Sack this food. <gasps> I think I have some emotes that properly convey how I feel right now. I mean, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, there you go. We don't even have, we don't need the red zone to win. All right. I don't have anything to do with this food, but like I could sack this cat and eat a food. I don't think I want to sack any other creature that much though. So I guess we let the mana slip. Sometimes you let it slip. All right. You are hexproof reach. You don't have death touch. Only your tap thingies have death touch. So let's attack Vivian. The opponent won't let that stand, so we'll send the face breaker here, and if they double block the face breaker, we sacrifice it for value. No! Not the 911. Menace, bro. I had a plan for that. Easy. Alright, so this is taken two. This is going to be blocked by the 911. Guess we'll go in for dubs. All right, does Croxa live? Can they kill Croxa in their green black deck? That looks mostly green. Every day is a new mutation. Dude, the opponent is in love with this freaking druid of the Gowl. Are you kidding me? Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free. Ma what? How did this happen? My oven! I had the combo. Alright. Alright. We'll figure it out. We always do. We figure things out here. We solve problems. There's no way they have another broken wings, right? None of these are threatening ultimate. We return.
So what do we need here? We need an untapped red or a treasure. TGB, you make losing more entertaining than any other creator I've seen. The laughter is killing me. What are you talking about? I never lose. Fake news, guys. Don't believe them. Fake news in the chat. Goat token required. Not, looks like we're not going to get to windfall here. I don't think I have anything else to cast this turn. The object is going to be to get this thing big enough to Zeatora them for 21. They get to have a pretty awesome turn here, but I think as long as Corvold lives, we have a chance here. And we can try to scry our way into a Veil of Summer. Sorry, not. I guess they might run black. Yeah, they do run black removal spells. So Veil of Summer, Snakeskin Veil, Tamiyo Safekeeping are cards we could find. Into the dungeon. They they have the Doom Blades in those dungeons. Doesn't look like it. I mean, are they gonna go for the 1416? That's what we need to know. Trample is something. Oh crap. Not like this. Not like this. They're a stampede of one. We will adapt to any threat. All right, they're beefing up the Reacher over here. All right, guys, we're just gonna don't mind us. Just taking seventeen, no big deal. Ooh, okay, so we need to spend six mana, six frickin' mana next turn on the Zeatora. So we've got to get this to 21. It's asking a lot. And this mills, so I guess we need to mill first, unless we have a specific requirement. But anything's good, like a creature is two mana, a blood token's fine. So I guess we'll go my turn. Greeters. Greeters. Does greeters do anything good for us? I don't... I mean, what ways do we have to make creatures really re-enter the battlefield here? I don't see it. Look, man. Okay, another land. Definitely bottoming land here. Definitely bottoming land. Okay. Okay, deck. Deck, what are you doing? Deck, don't don't play with me. Deck, don't you play with me like that. Deck? What the hell? Deck? Excuse you? Um, okay, 10 sacrifices to go. Easy. This is going to be easy. This is going to be the most never didn't have it you've ever seen. Don't worry about a thing.
Darn it, they didn't let me do the last thing. Okay, the, okay, the last thing, the last thing I had to do there, I guess I could attack, right? I could attack and get the sacrifice trigger to make it 21. What I was thinking is that I would go to end step and I would put the Zeatora trigger on the stack and stack Zeatora to the Woe Strider and that would be the 21th sacrifice. And then we fling. You, don't worry about it, guys. Never didn't have it. Attack for lethal. Um, they had a uh, reach. They had reacher. They had beast reacher over here, so they could just block, right? And we are back for the post game wraps, and I hope that you enjoyed the brawl footage from Twitch. I know it can be a little different uh, watching Twitch footage on YouTube, and maybe not the exact vibe that you're looking for, but hopefully still an entertaining one. As uh, yeah. Definitely a different side of CGB, but it works on Twitch. The growth on Twitch has been solid. Um, gosh, I remember early streams, wondering if I'd ever have more than 20 viewers on Twitch, and having uh, 800 to 1,000 viewers almost every stream is very surreal. Um, I don't know if it'll keep growing that way, but it's been really cool, and it is a fun place to connect with the fans. Uh, if you don't mind, just a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of the performance. Anyway, the stats. Corvold, treasures. You came here to learn about the deck. So how have I done with this deck? Since I've created it and as I've been tuning it, I am a total of 25 and 14. So it's been going good. Uh, in this particular stream, I think I went six and one. So trended up pretty sharply on stream. The deck has definitely gone through a number of cards trying to get better and become a more consistent deck. I think that what really tells the story is that we were 17 times on the play, 76% win rate. Also, when it comes to stats for Brawl, I mean, don't take them too seriously or anything, but it, it is still historic Brawl. It is a very high variance format. It is very snowball-y. Like, on the play is going to have a significantly stronger win rate if your deck is good than on the draw. So get used to that. It's a swingy format and it's a very, very, very snowball-y format. And if player A ramps on turn two and player B doesn't, it can get bad really fast. Anyway, uh, the deck has gone through a lot of cards. A lot of things have come in and out. I've tested a lot of things. I'm definitely in a place with it that I absolutely love. It's very fun to play. Just create a pile of treasures, play Gorvold, sack all those treasures, generate a ton of mana, draw a ton of cards, play all the right things, drain the opponent, like just absolutely demoralize them, make them get around a giant dragon, make them get around your other cards. Just absolutely crushes the competition. I think that if you're going to play Corvald in Historic Brawl, this is the way to do it, and I think you'll have a lot of fun. So, thank you for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video, uh, what commanders you would like to see me run for Histor Historic Brawl for my streams, and consider coming out and checking out a stream live. And thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. You're cool. Mm -hmm.